going to come to you today and talk to you about our phase one building campaign. Uh, standing here on Sunday morning behind the pulpit asking for money, I need to get a divinity degree now, right? That's right. <laughs> so, and don't worry, even we've already locked the doors back there. So, uh, First thing we want to do is kind of talk to you about why we're doing this. So some of the misconception has been we're just refreshing the look of the church. That's a byproduct, I'll grant you that. But the real reason we're doing this is the community. Right. We have been band-aiding stuff and fixing stuff in this church, hoping it holds together for long enough that the band-aids are falling apart. The train's about to come off the tracks, and I'll show you one of the things that we're talking about here in just a minute. But if you've ever been to a missions at Rosemont night and seen what this church does as far as outreach into the community, that's why we're here. Amen. It's yeah. not to show up in the morning and drink a cup of coffee and hear a few words and go home and, and forget about it the rest of the week. We are the hands and feet of Jesus in the community. Amen. And to do that, we have to have the facilities functional and operational to do that. Now, in another meeting, when I come before y'all, I'll kind of lay out some of those, but suffice it to say, we made a list, and it surprised me what we do and how we're involved. So this graphic behind me right here about being part of this community, that's why we're here. Granted, we're not a multi-million dollar church have never intended to be that. But we are a community church. Amen. And that's what's, what's needed. Next slide, please. So you've kind of maybe heard through back channels or even heard us kind of hint at it before. But this campaign is going to be three phases. I'm here to talk to you today about phase one. This is the official kickoff of phase one. It's a year long. And our goal is to raise $100,000. That wasn't an arbitrary number we picked. That's what it's going to take. Phase two and three, we'll come back and talk to y'all later about that. Uh, there's a list of projects that the building crew team is working on. This team you see here, along with David in the back running the systems, is the finance team. We're, we're going to be the ones squeezing turnips. So uh, they will come before you with a list, and the church will see that list at a later date. Next slide. Here's the culprits. If you look through there, all of those are the air conditioners around here. You can tell we've done this once before. Right around 20 years ago, all the air conditioners got replaced. So every system, with the exception of those that we've been replacing, are 20 plus years old and fixing to go out. The dominoes have started to fall. In this lower right corner, you can see one of the new ones. Thursday, one of the two that serves the fellowship hall went up and done. It's over. Seven to $8,000 to replace it. 2000 if we fixed it. You don't want to spend $2,000 fixing a 20-something-year-old air conditioner. I say that to let you know we're trying to be good financial stewards of any money that you give. We're not just saying replace these things willy-nilly. We're out there trying to find the best price and deal, but these need to be replaced. Summer's coming. And if they go out, we're done. This last one that went out took every bit of funds we had for emergency reserves. We're at zero. The next one that goes out means we're, the church is going to have to take out a loan. We don't want to do that. We don't want to get into debt. So next slide. So here's what it looks like to raise $100,000 in a year. That increases our income by about $8,300 a month. I know. 
100, I'm talking big numbers, 100,000, 8,300. But we're a church. Reality is about 50 faithful givers at about $166 extra a month above tithe and offerings raises $100,000 in a year. That's if it's just us giving. Part of the job the finance crew has is finding givers outside the church through grants, people in the community, businesses, raising some additional funds to reduce the burden on the church. But it starts here. Think of it yourself. You get these things in the mail. You're not going to give to something if you know the people asking for money aren't giving. So it starts with us. The other part of this is, I understand, our church is made up of a lot of fixed incomes. Coming in and saying, hey, we need another $166 a month above what you're normally giving now is a burden. Some people can. Some people can't. Some people can give more. As a church body, we can come together and do this. I, again, will beat the drum of it has to be above our tithes and offerings because I've sat with David on the budget committee and our budget can't take a hit. We cut it to the bone. We actually had to do away with some stuff that we normally do. So this has to be above and beyond. But the truth of the matter is every little bit counts. The smallest gift to the largest gift, they're all just as important because they all enable us to do the mission to serve this community. So in your bulletins today, you saw some new things. First thing you saw is this. So you have them in your bulletins today. They'll be in the back of the pews as we continue through this year of giving. This is envelopes that if you want to contribute to the renovation fund, Use this envelope. That way the count committee, has everybody knows exactly where it goes. Mary, when she gets it in the office, it's very clear exactly what this is for. So this is why when we move through the year. Secondly, you'll see this blue card. So this is a pledge card. What we're asking you to do with this is to take it home, pray about this. Don't just fill it out today and throw it back in the plate. Take it home, consider it, pray about it. Let God lead you into what he asked you to give. Fill it out, and we're asking for them back by March 10th. The reason we ask for a pledge card is so we can start looking forward into, here's what the church said, it is dedicated to giving. How much more do we need to go find outside? And, and can we start planning on replacement of these systems before it's a catastrophe and goes out on a Friday and we're sitting in here sweating at 100 degrees on Sunday? So part of this pledge card you'll see is you can say I'm going to give it annually, I'm going to give it monthly, or I'm going to give a one-time gift. We, we would really love you to pray about that and consider it and let God lead you. Very rarely in my life have I done something or been led to do something that God has called me to do that it didn't stretch my faith. Forget me, look through your Bible and all the people God used and, what, and the positions he put them in were not easy. He stretched them. But he was there with them. He can do the same for us. Amen. So with that, I'm going to let you go and let Brother Doug come up here and hopefully he takes his hat off. He doesn't preach the sermon <laughs> with the hat on. Thank you all for listening to me and we look forward to raising this so we can start fixing the facilities and, and impacting this community.